BenQ PD 3420Q is their latest 34-inch 21 to 9 ultra widescreen display that is part of the Pro Designer series. This display is starting to be released worldwide and many of you are going to have the opportunity to get this display and use it as part of your workflow. Some of you may wonder how this display differ from the flagship that have come before it, for example, the PD3220U. Well, I have both of these displays right behind me and what we're going to do is compare these two displays together, talk about its features, the resolution, size, and what are some of the other considerations that you may want to think about before you integrate either one of these displays into your workflow. Let's find out together. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Let's first talk about the group of creative that BenQ have made this display for. Starting out with designers, if you're designing for print, for web, for mobile, this is pretty much going to be a great display for you, including for those doing interior and also exterior design. So any type of design work, the PD line is going to be fantastic. Another group of creative is animators. Many times when you animate a project, what you want to do is retain the dark details in your animation. However, those dark detail areas can be really hard to animate because you can hardly tell the detail apart. Well, the PD line has a color mode called animation. And in animation, what you can do is from the panel, you can line up those dark shadow areas. This way, what you can do is animate those areas easier while retaining the deep dark shadow details in the file that you're working on upon final rendition. The other group that would be good for this too is that if you're working in wireframe or 3D prototyping work, this is going to be really amazing for you because it has Gamma Dual. And in Gamma Dual, you can split the display right in half. One side, you can set it to CAD CAM mode, which will enhance wireframing. And the other half, you can set it to sRGB mode so you can preview what that wireframing is going to render in real time without actually having to switch between the different color modes for the wireframe and for the rendition. This is going to save you a lot of time in your workflow. Another group of creative that BenQ have added to the PD lineup is content creators such as anyone making videos for YouTube or just making videos in general. This is going to be the display for you. The one exception is that if you need a color critical post-production display, the SW lineup is going to be better for you to consider at this point because of its hardware calibration capability. But if you're just really doing these type of videos, this display is going to work great. Now that we understand BenQ PD lineup, let's start by comparing the physical size of these two models. We have a 32 and a 34 inch. In our mind, when we look at those two numbers, it's probably not going to be that big of a difference. But when you see the panel itself, there is a big difference as you see here. That's because the way how display manufacturers throughout the years have been measuring the size of the display is diagonally. It's not using the length, it's not using the height or anything like that, it's using the diagonal measurement. And when you factor in the aspect ratio of the display, that number can quickly be misleading because you can see there that this 34 inch has a shorter height than the 32 inch one. And that's something very interesting there. So the PD3420Q has an aspect ratio of 21 to nine. Now, if you really done the calculation and you punch in the pixels itself, it really comes out to 43 to 18, but 43 to 18 aspect ratio it's a number that's really hard to comprehend. There are large numbers. So a lot of it get round down to a simpler number that we can quickly comprehend them, which is the 21 to nine. The PD3220U has a more contemporary aspect ratio and the one that we have been used to for all these years with LCD displays of 16 to nine, which is what you see there. So you have the nine aspect ratio being common between the two, but obviously, because of the ratio in general on the long side, that really changes drastically the size of display. Now, I have both of these display line up at the very bottom there. When you, with this, what you're looking at is about 0.8 inches or four centimeters difference at the very top end. So the PD3420Q is a little bit shorter than the 32 inch one, which is kind of like really mind boggling when you really think about it, but that's pretty much what it looks like. So here's the thing, if you're planning to run this display in a dual screen format, a 27 inch from BenQ, it's going to fit much better because this line is going to be straight. So the height between those two are really different. Like the difference between them are generally minor. For example, the PD2720U, for instance, SW270C, SW271, those are going to match much better than having a 32 inch next to it. 
One thing that I've been thinking about is how to creatively run to BenQ PD3420Q, this ultra widescreen display. Rather than running them side by side in a traditional dual screen format, what you can do is use a visa mount on these display, wall mount both of them so that the bottom one would be in a normal configuration like this. And the top one, what you can do is rotate a 180 so that this bar, this plastic bar here, is at the very top. And now you can have a 21 to 18 aspect ratio display in a top bottom dual display format. I think that would be really cool. If you do something like that, definitely send me an email to picture of the setup because I definitely want to see that. One thing though to remember is that the heat dissipation is generally at the very top. So when you rotate it down, the heat's going to kind of dissipate inside. But from using these displays for quite a long time, they don't usually get really hot. I mean, like I can put my hand there right now and it's just slightly warm. So it's really not that big of a deal, but something to consider too, if you ever want to run it in that format. Another thing that we need to talk about this display is the bezel around it. The PD3220U has pretty much an infinity edge display that runs on all four sides and it has a very thin black line that runs around the display. That black line itself is about 0.2 inches or about six millimeters. If you want to do the calculation, I've actually measured those. And the thing with the PD3420Q is that there has been some changes where we get the bezel on the bottom now, but on the other three side of the display, we still get that black line. That black line have grew a little bit by around 0.3 millimeters. So that black line that you're seeing there is about 0.9 millimeters or 0.3 inches. So if you're concerned about just the bezel or the lines around the display, that is the difference between the two. And one more thing that we need to talk about when we discuss the bezel is the front coating or the front cover on the display. I feel that the PD3220U, the front coating is slightly glossier. It's still matte coating by the way, but it has a little bit more of a glossy texture compared to the PD3420. 20Q. And that's just another thing that you may want to consider and add to the list when you're comparing and considering these two displays. And because we're talking about panel cover and coating, let's talk about the panel itself. Both of these are 10-bit panel done by an 8-bit plus FRC. They are an IPS LED backlight panel, which means that the angle view is really amazing and also the color accuracy at all the angle views are really great as well. Next up is resolution. And this is going to be a discussion very similar to the 2K versus 4K video that I've done in the past. My goal here is not to steer you towards one resolution versus the other, but to inform you of the differences between those two so you can make the best decision and choose the resolution that best fits into your workflow. Here's the thing, I'll tell you right now that even in the year that we're in, if you need to get a 2K display because that fits better into your workflow, don't worry about it. Get a 2K display because that matches better with what you do. If you need a 4K display, then get a 4K display. There's really nothing wrong with getting a 2K display today. It doesn't mean that the panel is bad or anything like that. It's just a different type of resolution and that will fit into your workflow differently. That being said, let's lay some groundworks for the different resolution first. Let's start out with the display that I don't have behind me, which is a 2K 16 to 9 aspect ratio. For those display, the resolution is 2560 by a height of 1440. Now let's move on to the 34 inch ultra widescreen display, this 21 to 9 aspect ratio one that's similar to many of the other 21 to 9 aspect ratio 34 inch that are out there. It is 3440 across and with the height of 1440. If you notice right away that that height in pixels is equivalent to a 2K resolution height, right? So what this really means is that this display is not going to be quite as taxing on your video card as a 4K one would be. But before we go on and discuss that further, let's talk about the 4K one. So what's the 4K resolution then? Well, it's 3840 by 2160. The 2160 height there is really the difference between these two panels. So we're talking about 1440 height versus 2160 height. As far as the linear resolution difference between these two, we're talking about a 400 pixel difference or so. So we have 3440 and 3840 on that one. So we're talking about, like I said, 400 pixels difference. That really is not that big of a deal. But when you really calculate all those out and run it in megapixels, we're really starting to come up with a real number that our video card has to push out. To calculate the megapixels for each of these respective display resolution, I simply multiply the width by the height divided by 1 million, and this is going to give me a number. Remember though that this number is how many pixels your GPU has to process and push out 60 times per second. 
So on a 2K, 16 to 9, we're looking at about 3.5 megapixel. On a 21 to 9, an equivalent of this display right here, the megapixel wise, is around 4.7 megapixel or 4.7 million pixels. That is a jump from a 2K 3.5 one, but not quite as significant as if we would have going to a true 4K one. So on a 4K one, when I calculate the megapixel for this, it's around 8 million. So even going from this 4K 16 to 9 to a 21 to 9 2K equivalent, we're still looking going from 4.7 megapixels to 8 million megapixels. So we're talking about a lot of pixels difference between the two. And if you have the newer video card, the GTX, the RTX series, for example, the NVIDIA 1000, 2000, 3000 series, or the AMD equivalent, you're gonna be okay there. However, if you're really running the integrated graphic, well, 4K, sometimes it does okay. Sometimes when you push it really hard, it starts to lag. This is something that happens. So if you don't want to run into an update right now, whether it's your computer or your video card, for instance, this 34 inch one is definitely the one to consider. Another thing that we want to consider when we're getting a 4K display is the resolution. As I mentioned before, it's eight megapixel. That is a lot of resolution being pushed. However, one of the side effects of that would be if you run 4K native, your text, your icon, everything is going to be small. So most of the time you would get a 4K display and you would run it at an equivalent resolution. For instance, if you take a 4K display, you run an equivalent 2K resolution at a time, that really negates the effect of, or the benefit of having a true 4K display to start out with. Another thing that you want to think about as well is the operating system that you're using. For instance, Mac versus Windows scale the display resolution entirely different. On a Macintosh system, it will scale the entire operating system and all the apps running on it in order to bend them very similar to the way how the Retina display works. On the PC side of things, it's pretty much the operating system and all the programs would run at the native resolution of the display and the programs itself that gets launched and the icons and everything would get zoomed into. So everything gets zoomed in independently. Depending on which camp you prefer, both of these implementation always will have its downside and not one of them is actually better than the other. So that's another thing that we need to really think about when we're getting a true 4K display. This on the other hand, if you get the 2K equivalent, generally the pixels and everything are gonna be just fine. You can plug it, you can run it right away. You don't have to scale them at all. And this is another benefit of getting a true K pixels. Even though the pixel pitch on this display is 109 pixels per inch, this is very similar to a 2K 16 to 9 one. However, because this being a wide screen aspect ratio display, there is a lot more pixels to the left and the right. You tend to sit back from this display a little bit more. And personally for me, just looking at this display in general, I feel like the perception wise, the pixels are actually much closer than they are. Now this is the same thing on the 32 inch 4K one of the PD3220U, the pixels per inch on this one is 143, so you can kind of bend them. But when you really start to bend these pixels together, you're not really getting the true retina resolution. This is pretty much the same problem with all of the 4K displays out there as well. In order to get true retina, we need to have more than about 200 pixels per inch. To get that, we need a 5K display, but that 5K display in general opens another can of worms. If it's already difficult and hard to see running native on a 4K display, and if it's already pushing your GPU that hard, just think about how much more difficult your GPU would have to work and how much tougher it is for your eyes to really be looking at the display that has a 5K equivalent resolution. Definitely for that one, you're gonna be running scaling all the time, which you will then get smoother text, but you're not really being nice to your GPU. There's one more thing that I want to add about 4K scaling. Depending on your preference, you may or may not like it. Personally, I have no problem running 4K scaling. I'm okay with the pixels not being quite double so that I get true retina, but it works well for me at the distance that I work from the display and everything. I don't have a problem with that. Some people have the issue where you run a 4K display in scale resolution, and because it's not really quite the double amount of resolutions that I mentioned before to the retina, you get these texts that are not quite as sharp as they can be. If you fall into this group, I totally understand that, and this is a personal preference. Personally, like I said, I don't have a problem with it, but if you want to get a 4K, this is something that you may want to consider as well. That being said, let's now talk about the AccuColor technology that BenQ have built into all their PD lineup. This one though, the PD3420Q, does have a few things being added into it. First of all, let's talk about their color gamut coverage. So, 
The color gamut coverage on this panel is the highest out of any PD displays that is out there. It is 98% display P3 and DCI-P3 and 100% sRGB. And in my review, I also mentioned too that I'm going to venture out and say that it can also cover 100% Rec. 709 as well, even though they don't list it on their website as such. On the PD3220U, the DCI-P3 coverage and the display P3 on this display is 95%. This can do 100% sRGB, 100% Rec. 709. So in general, the color is good, but there is a slight difference in the P3 color space. Will that 3% really make a difference in your workflow? Probably not too much, but it's just something to know and it's something to consider when you're looking at these display. Another thing that I want to mention is the color modes on these display. Both of these display have color modes that are very similar to each other. So they have the standard display P3, DCI P3, they have the CAD cam, the animation, the low blue light mode, the dark room mode, I can list more. It has sRGB, Rec. 709. But one of the color modes that the PD3220U has is Adobe RGB. Even though this panel can't do 99% Adobe RGB, it will be able to reach about 80% Adobe RGB or so. On this panel, BenQ have eliminated that Adobe RGB color mode in its entirety, so you don't have that anymore. So for calibration-wise, you're probably best off running the calibration on this display using Display P3 color space or sRGB or Rec. 709, depending on the workflow that you do. And next up, what we need to do is talk about the Delta E guarantee for these panels. With BenQ PD line, they guarantee that you're going to be able to calibrate it and get a Delta E value of less than three, and the panel itself are going to have a Delta E value of less than three from the factory as well. The calibration report for this PD3420Q is 1.02, which is extremely low considering that it is a widescreen display, and this is just really an awesome display to use. Another thing that BenQ have also gone in and added to this display, the PD3420Q, is uniformity technology. With their new uniformity technology on this panel, it's pretty much throughout all the color modes. So how will you benefit from this, you may ask? Well, if you're looking at a portion of an image or a portion of sign in the center of the display and you move that portion to any of the outer edges of the display, for example, left, right, top, bottom, you're going to get a color very similar to what you're seeing in the middle there. And the great thing about this PD3420Q is that this is implemented throughout the entire panel, throughout all the color modes. So regardless of color mode that you are in, you're going to be able to see really great uniformity throughout. This is something different on the PD3220U, where there's two color modes that BenQ have calibrated this display for greater uniformity. That is display P3 and sRGB. I've actually run a uniformity test on both of these display and confirmed these results. So again, I confirmed that the PD3220U only display P3 and sRGB has the greater uniformity, where it's really awesome. The Delta E below five for all the quadrants for the Delta EAB, where on this one, it's pretty much on all the color modes. So that's something else to consider as well if you're looking at these two panels. Another thing that we need to discuss here is also backlight bleeding. So the backlight bleeding on these two displays are really great. I think that it's a little bit less on the PD3420Q compared to the PD3220U as you see here. Now let's talk about companion software calibration and certification. For companion software, BenQ have made a software called Display Pilot. And with Display Pilot, you can install that program and use Display Pilot to control the display brightness, to put it in gamut dual mode, to change the input on the display. You can do so many things using that app. But what I really love most about Display Pilot is that it has a window organizer. This way, what you can do is snap window to a certain portion of your display and organize your workspace a little bit better. This is especially helpful when you have multiple applications running at the very same time. It is a really great software and I'd highly recommend that you check that out. Now let's talk about calibration. Being that this is BenQ PD line and is software calibration only, it is not compatible with BenQ Palette Master Element. Even though it may calibrate, it doesn't really do a true calibration, so don't try to use that. What you want to use is the software that comes with your calibration device. For instance, if you have an X-Rite device, you'll be either using the i1 Profiler or the i1 Studio software. If you have a data color spider device, you'll be using the respective spider software, depending on the calibrator that you have to run the calibration on these display. And lastly, the certification. 
both of these displays are Kalman verified and Pantone validated. So that means that they've been verified that they're going to do amazing video work. And also they can match really well with any type of print work that you throw into these display as well. Both of these display are HDR10 capable with the PD3420Q being able to do a peak brightness of 400 nits. And the other thing too is that it is Visa HDR400 certified where the PD3220U has a peak brightness of 300 nits. So if you're looking to enjoy HDR content, the max peak brightness is going to benefit you and the PD3220U is going to be the one to consider in that situation. Now let's talk connectivity. Both of these displays have port configuration that are similar to each other. They both have two HDMI 2.0, one full display port 1.4. They both have a USB type C 3.1 uplink that you can use it so that the display will act as a hub. On the back of the display in general, there are two USB 3.1 ports on the back that you can plug in your peripherals. And on the side display, there is a USB type C, a USB 3.1 type A, and also a headphone jack. Something to note is that on the PD3220U, this 4K one, the ports on the side is on the right side. And on the PD3420Q, the ports are on the side is on the left side of the display. So they're not really on the same side as you would think that would follow through the convention of the PD line, but that's just something to note there. Another thing that is different between these two display, however, is the USB Type-C in general. So on the PD3220U, this one has a Thunderbolt 3 connection and this Thunderbolt 3 will do a few more things than the PD3420Q. Number one is that on compatible computers, it will also act as a port that you can do daisy chaining. So that means that you can daisy chain another 4K display right up to this 4K display in general. So you can just use one singular cable from your laptop on a compatible Thunderbolt connection. This is something that you can't do on the PD3420Q. Another thing too is the power delivery from the Thunderbolt connection in general. The PD3220U will provide 85 watts of power to your device that is connected to it. This is any laptop or anything that has a battery in it will take the power from this display. One cable makes it very simple. On the PD3420Q, the implementation is a little bit different. Rather than having Thunderbolt, this is a USB Type-C with 60 watt power delivery and it cannot do daisy chaining. With this one in general, you can still plug in a 16 inch MacBook Pro and run it just fine. If you're trying to charge a battery on the device under light load, it will charge slower than the 85 watt power delivery because it's just less power going in in general. If you're running your laptop under heavy load, what's going to happen is that that power will be powering a laptop and won't be charging the battery. So something to keep in mind there with the PD3420Q. Let's go over the industrial design and ergonomics. Both of these display have very similar look to them. They're really nice, sleek, clean line, and it's really designed to match that of an Apple product. So the moment you set an Apple product next to it, it just pretty much blends in with that product and the environment that you're in right away. Really nice, really clean, really modern. Also talking about the branding on both of these display, there's pretty much no branding in front whatsoever. The only place where you would see the BenQ logo is in the bottom left of the base for this display. That's pretty much the only place where you're going to see that. Other than that, you'll see this really nice stand going up. The way how the display or the stand is being mounted on the display is slightly different between these two. Being that this is a widescreen display, you definitely don't want to be pivoting this up or anything like that. And even though you raise it up all the way, it won't give you enough clearance to really pivot this display vertical anyhow. So what BenQ have done there is for this stand, you can't really rotate or do minor rotation left and right. Something to keep in mind there is that the table that you set this display on should be level. Otherwise, it's going to be slightly tilted and there's really no way to correct that. The way how you will rotate this display, for instance, to the left, to the right, the angles that you're able to do in general is very similar to the PD3220U, which is the one right next to it. Also, the angle pivoting down and up, they're pretty much very similar to the other two as well. This is pretty much the display itself in its maximum height. And I'll show you in a second what does it look like in its you know lowest height setting. On the PD3220U, what you also get though, and I'm pulling this out a little bit because what I want to do is show you that you can rotate this. Again, when you try to rotate display this display, you want to pivot it out first because otherwise the bottom angle is going to hit the bottom. But once you do that, then you can rotate the display right in place there. So this is something that you can do on the PD3220U is the rotation part, and that's something that you cannot do on. 3420Q. All right, let's put this back. 
Otherwise, if you take a look at the ergonomics, the height adjustment in general, and also the angles that you can pull the display up or down, they're pretty much very similar to each other. The benefit though of the 3420Q not being able to pivot is that the stand is a little bit sturdier compared to the PD3220U as you see here, you get a little bit more wiggle room left and right, but that comes to the territory of the display in general and what the capabilities are. So pushing this down to as low as height level, this is pretty much the way how it's going to stand compared to compare these two together. So the height at the bottom there are gonna be very similar to each other and you still get that height difference at the top there. A few more odds and ends about the ergonomics that both of these ship with BenQ Hotkey Pup Gen 2 so you can quickly switch between different color modes. You can sit back from the computer and really control the display from the comfort of receive without having to reach to the display itself. But if you should decide to reach for the display, the control between these two display and the menu on the display itself are pretty much the same, which if you're just coming from one display, moving into the next, there's pretty much no new learning curve whatsoever. And I will say that I really enjoy using the joystick on these PD line a lot compared to the SW because I feel like it's a little bit more intuitive to use, especially when you're approaching the display itself. And as we're approaching the end of this comparison, both of the gamma dual and split screen mode that are available in the PD 3220U is available in the PD 3420Q as well, with the PD 3420Q adding another mode, the 21 to 9 one, where it pretty much will split the screen into two different portions asymmetrically, so that one portion of the screen be running a 16 to 9 traditional 2K aspect ratio, and the other portion be running the 5 to 9 aspect ratio, which is 880 by 1440. This is really great if you want to run two computer environments and you want to have not just an even split, but one running a traditional 2K screen. So those are the differences between the two, but otherwise you can always output four sources at the very same time on the display, very similar to what you can do with the PD3220U. So I hope that you find this comparison between these two BenQ PD display helpful and entertaining. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified every time I upload cool new contents like this. And until next time, Alright, it's right.